I enlisted in the army. Do you remember what month of the and what year? Well, it was uh, I was uh, 18 years old at the time, and I was at Hanford, Washington, where now right behind your back is an article about Hanford, Washington, right there. Okay. And uh, they found that there is uh, some leakage there now on the uh, area that I was at, and then I went to uh, California with DuPont Company to work with my dad who was a builder and they were building barracks out there. And uh, then uh, I said to my dad, I was 17 then, and I told my dad, I said, well, I'm going to be drafted when I'm 18. I might as well go in the service. And he said, well, you can, but you got to have your permission from your mother, so we'll have to write to her and get her permission. And we did, and I went in right into the service when I was about 17 and a half years old. I was in the state of California when California, I joined the military, okay. yes. Where did you go for basic training? I went down to uh, the... Uh, Out in the west coast somewhere? No, east coast, down oh, east in the Flor coast. down into Florida. Oh, okay. Some place down... What grade? Fort Sheridan, Illinois. No, not Illinois, down in the corner, way down in the... Louisiana. Oh, Louisiana, okay. Boy, yeah. what a change in environment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In California, Louisiana. Yeah, okay, you had your basic training down there, and then after basic, where did they assign you? They assigned me to... Uh, Remember what fort you had to go to from there? Boy, you know, it's a long time ago, yeah. but I went, I went to... Uh, uh, I went over to New York, and we were shipped from New York to... Uh, to um, uh, but, but, but the, Eng England? Uh, no, no, no. We landed in the uh, uh, harbor of um, uh, in so somewhere near France. France and Germany. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now you, you were army all the way. So you basic training. After basic training, they didn't give you any other training. No, I tell you what happened. I I, I got on the boat in New York. Am I talking too loud? No. Oh, I, I got on the boat in New York, and when I got on the boat in New York, I got a call that, that I was supposed to report to headquarters. And I thought, what in the world did I do now? And uh, I don't know what I did, but I went up there and I met some big executive up there that was in the Army, and he said, you're going to be working for me. And I said, oh, what am I supposed to do? He said, you listen to me. When I call you, you come up here. So I think that's where I got my first stripe on the shoulder. And I was a, a first sergeant at that time. And this took place? La Harve, France was my designation. What, where in France? La, La Harve, France. La Harve, France. Yes. So you left New York as a private, went over to Lavar, France. And, and I became a first sergeant then in charge of troops, getting off of the boat at La Harve, France. That's a pretty big jump from private to sergeant. Yes, isn't that something? But that's the way they did it back then, because they needed people on the uh, on that uh, coastline, because we were right there between the, the uh, uh, where were the end, the war ended in uh, in um, my memory is getting to the point where. Well, what year was it? First of all, I forgot to ask you, what year was it that you joined the army? Forty four, forty three. That was 1944. 1944. Mm -hmm. Which month again? Uh, it had to be in uh, uh, early spring of 44. Okay, all right. Now you're in France, and you're assigned to help the troops do what? Get on the, on the uh, trucks and so forth, because we were at La Havre, France, and we were, between, we were going between the uh, Battle of the Bulge and... and uh, Germany, and that's where we were going. We were not in the Battle of the Bulge, but we were alongside of that. And when we heard that uh, uh, Hitler had done away with himself, and of course, people that were in the Battle of the Bulge, they dropped all their guns and left and, and uh, come walking out and said, we don't have any place to go. We don't have any home. We don't have this. We don't have that. And so then we were assigned to now go. That's, this is the Germans you're talking about? Yeah, Germans, okay. yeah. And the Germans were then assigned to uh, uh, come forward to us where we put them on the trials at Nuremberg. 
Now, <clears throat> when the war ended, there was thousands of Germans who said that that was enough. Yeah. So who had to go find these top German Nazi leaders? Who was A uh, gentleman that I have his picture right there on the back of your, okay. right there. There okay. he is. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll get a close-up of that. Yeah. Way over there, They're right in the middle. Right. Okay. I, I Give me my cards over there. I got his name, too. My cards are right there. Okay, we'll get that in a minute. Okay. But now you... You were helping the troops get on trucks. The war came to an end. Where were you when it came to an end? I can't remember exactly where I was in uh, in uh, France. Okay. Uh, I, I mean uh, Germany. I can't remember exactly. I was somewhere where wherever the uh, Battle of the Bulge was. We were on the outside, on the right side of that. We were not in the Battle of the Bulge. You didn't have to get involved in combat then, because no, I did not have to get in combat then. No. Okay. But I was in a little bit of combat prior that we had to watch for what was going on there. All right. Now, when you were there, uh, at some point, it didn't happen right away. The Nuremberg trials was being organized and set up. How did you get involved to be part of that piece of history, the Nuremberg trial? Well, they pulled us back there and uh, and uh, assigned us to different duties and so forth at the Palace of Justice at Nuremberg. And, and we were at the Palace of Justice at Nuremberg right around that area. And uh, <clears throat> because memory is so bad at this time, yeah. uh, it's hard to remember everything in detail. but. Uh, uh, one of uh, one of the favorite bombings with that uh, Hitler had was uh, close to where we were at uh, the trials at Nuremberg. <coughs> it was all bombed out, and we were in the one end of where Hitler kept his stormtroopers, and that's where we stayed during the time that we were at the Palace of Justice. But and they uh, also. Uh, uh, from that point, assigned us to different duties, and I had different duties there because uh, I had my rank went up, and uh, <laughs> they seemed to be moving the rank right on up. And uh, at that time, I was a regimental sergeant major, and so forth. And I was in charge of a certain duties there at the trials, and I have photos and so forth, which you will be seeing in a little bit on the pictures that you have here around here. Now, did. You were assigned to do different duties, and that changed every day or every week, or was it the same? No, it kept the same about every day because I got on one duty. I had, <coughs> we had all those Germans that were on trial that were brought in, and which you'll see a picture of uh, recently or, or very soon. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, of course, we had to be assigned to each one of them to see that they were in the proper place. I was not in the uh, area where they were kept. But uh, others were, and uh, I didn't go into their place of where they're going to be living there for a while. Now, were you one of the soldiers lined up against the wall, behind the German prisoners? Was it, were you in one of those pictures? Yes, you? and you'll see that on a picture behind okay. you. I have the film. Uh, were you then assigned to guard duty, where they were being kept in a cell at that time? I was not kept on guard duty there, no, because I was not in the cell, or not near the cell. Okay. But there were friends of mine that were, and I had one friend from Pequot Lakes, Minnesota, that was uh, there, and he was there until <coughs> uh, during, uh, until the trials was uh, practically over, and uh, the um, uh, they were some of them were given the sentence. Uh, and uh, Goring was one. He was next to Hitler there, you know, at that yep. time. Number two. And number two, that's right. And uh, so uh, I have a picture there on tri uh, in back of you there now that uh, shows Goring sitting there, and uh, he was ranting and raving. And my duty was with a uh, side mount on me to go over there and tap him on the shoulder and say, sit down. And so he sat down, and there's a picture showing him with his arms folded and very quiet. And that's as close as I could get to him. 
Now, you, you mentioned before you used to make comments to Goering about how bad he was and all the people he killed. Did you, did you ever express your thoughts to Goering at all? No, I did not. I never expressed my thoughts to Goering at all about that. I, I really actually never really talked to him. Okay. I just, all I did was tap him on the shoulder and say, sit down, because he was ranting and raving about the sentence that he got of execution. Now, the biggest question out there for a lot of people is, uh, somebody smuggled in a cyanide pill to Goring's cell. Did that ever get uh, ever get uh, resolved? Who brought the cyanide pill? Into Not to my knowledge. Knowledge. The, the pill was brought in by somebody. Yeah. Did anyone ever figure out who brought it in? Well, somebody claimed they did, but I don't think anybody ever actually knew what happened there. But that was it. And he took the pill. And when he did take the pill, uh, he was facing the wall and. The person that was guarding his cell was a person by the name from Pequot Lakes, Douglas Saxwell. And Douglas Saxwell was ordered that if they roll over and face the wall, you take a call for a stick. So everybody was hollering, stick, stick, stick. And so they turned him over, and there he was laying there. And then a little bit later, the all rank broke loose, and everybody come up there, and there was rank all over the place. And so uh, I was on the other side of the wall, so uh, on, the, on the other side of the uh, area where they were prisoners were kept, there was two two different uh, uh, areas. There, there were one on one side and one on the other side of cells, cell blocks, and uh, so uh, Doug saw me on the other side and he hollered at me and he said, "Jerry," he said, "Come over here." He said, "And help me pull them out." They were just Put, bringing him out then, and I grabbed a hold of his feet and I pulled him out and I took off and I've never seen him <laughs> since that time. Now what, you say call for a stick, what was the stick used for? To pull, to poke him on the back so he wouldn't face the wall his, and, and his bed. When he turned over in his bed he had to face us all. Now so, when I say us, I'm talking about the guards. Yep. Yeah, the guards. So the guards wanted to be able to see him at all, all times. All the time. That was the that was orders that they would see him all the time. So he turned to the wall, took the cyanide pill, and died facing the wall. That's correct. And there was an officer there that used to talk to him quite a bit. They thought for a while that the officer brought the pill in. Any chance the guard could have slipped him a cyanide pill? Uh, I don't think so. I think there were so many different people that came into that cell block from what I gathered later uh, from Doug and uh, a few other people uh, that uh, who knows who brought that pill in, but there's rumors, of, and I never get into any rumors on those uh, things because I don't know and I really don't care. He took the pill. That was it. Okay, but you never had a chance to tell Goring what you thought of him then and all the problems he caused. No, I can't say that I ever th talked to him about that. No, okay. I, I just, the only thing I said when I was standing right behind him, which you'll see on the photo, and uh, when he uh, started to spout off about his cell, or about his uh, sentence that he got, why uh, death sentence, why uh, then he stood up and started to rant and rave a little bit, and I just went over there and with my stick and tapped him on the shoulder and told him to sit down. And on the picture, you'll see him sitting there with his arms folded, and uh, that was the end of it. Well, we do have a video of his last speech. Yeah. Uh, how long were you assigned to the Nuremberg trial? Oh, I can't remember. I was there from the time it started until I left again, which was in 43 or 44, after the executions of the other Nazis. So it had to be 45 then? Then 45, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're about six, six months maybe? I suppose, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. when, you, when, you, when that was all completed, the Nuremberg trial was completed, then where were you assigned next? Uh, with, I was with the... Uh, the person did the executions that they that tied the rope. That is the hangman. He's the one that had to hang all the criminals. Yep, he had had to hang one. Of them. We had to get the guards to bring them down to him, and then he put the rope on, and away we go. You were with the person who put the rope around the prisoners' necks. That's were you up, correct. Were you up on the gallows with him as a guard, or what? 
No, no. Oh. No, I was down below when he did that. When he was in the, that was a gymnasium that he, that he was tying the rock, the, or had the rope up there and tied that around their neck. And then... Well, you were there when they, they hung him then? I was there when they, they hung him. And I was at, then that, that was a gymnasium. And your job was what, to guard? I was, I was a guard at that time, standing down below. And when they came from the second floor and onto the, uh, to the, the guard area, why uh, a lot of them would say, see Kyle Hitler, and that so forth. And then they'd go down and they'd get the rope and that was it. And they'd put them out in the backyard. So you were there, you were there for the whole hanging process for all these That's criminals, right. yeah, mm -hmm. and until, until the last one was hung. That's right. And then you got reassigned. That's from right. There. Uh, they were they were reassigned. They were in the uh, they were brought to the back of the gymnasium and they were laid out there on the on a whatever they laid them on, and uh, so then uh, uh, the report was that the uh, Hearst come in and got him and uh, took him away. Well, at that time I was called for the wall and I went up on the wall where I could see them real plain. And uh, they... Uh, you mean them, you mean the bodies? The bodies, the yeah. bodies laying behind the gymnasium. Right. And they were just sitting there and uh, or laying there rather. And uh, all of a sudden why... Uh, a big truck come in and loaded them all in the truck and the way they went, there was no hearse that I know of. That was a big rumor that uh, came around. Do, do, do you know where they, where they took them to, to bury them? Well, I heard later where they took them to and they dumped them in the river, I guess, and took off. I, I am not sure, sure, sure about what that was. I followed it up in some books and there were two or three books that told us a little bit more about it, but I think we knew more about it than what the book showed. So. That was about it. Now you you left Nuremberg and then then where did they assign you? Uh, well, I suppose when we come back from <clears throat> back You're on the ship, you said. Yeah, on the ship, coming back. I think I I can't exactly remember where we landed, but we I know that where we were discharged in Fort Snelling, you know, or whatever where it was. That's St. Paul here. Yeah, St. Paul here yeah. or something. I think we were discharged there. So you came you put you came to the East Coast and then did you go? From the East Coast to Fort Snelling by train. From the East Coast uh, to Fort Snelling, St. Paul. Did you get? Did you travel by train? I can't remember exactly where, we, how we, what we traveled on. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. memory gets kind of bad. Sure. Now, then you were discharged at Fort Snelling. Yeah. You had, um, you, had you had quite an experience. You were part of history that was phenomenal. Well. It might be phenomenal, wasn't it, to me? <laughs> no, at the time, I'm sure it wasn't. But, no. uh, and that's why you can't remember everything, because you didn't really pay too much attention to what was going on, except that those Nazis were being done. We had 110 or 20 Nazis on trial, and so we had to watch over them quite a bit, you know, and uh, while they were sitting there on trial. Did they... Uh make a big fuss while they were sitting there on trial, or they kept pretty quiet? They were pre kept pretty quiet, yeah. yeah. Now, how about when some of those that were sentenced to death by hanging, did they try to make a big speech just before they were hung, or what? Well, I have records here that show them over there of, of the ones that were hung and all that, and uh, some of them did a little, but I didn't pay any attention to that. That was not my duty. Yeah. No. Which one is you, the one with the stripe, with, the stripes? Yeah, with the stripe, the big stripe there. I'm in there with the helmet on, and that, that was one of my duties, was to get all of those people lined up with those helmets on. Okay. They all had helmets on and, and during the trials. And, and Goring's down at the bottom. Yeah, he's down at the bottom, and you, I'm, I'm right above him. Mm -hmm. How come those weren't on your jacket? Did someone take them off? Yeah, my brother. You took him off? Yeah, five years younger than I. When I came back to Minnesota, he, he took him off and stuck him in my pocket. I don't know what happened there. Explain to me the Jerry and Jerry and Larry show. What is that about? Well, <coughs> uh, one day I'm sitting right here in this chair, and a gentleman come up and put a a paper in my door there, and I and then he walked away. 
And uh, then he'd come back and he said, Jerry, there's uh, some articles in there that you'd like to see. And that was l an article about Larry being there at the trials. So I called and got a hold of Larry, and we've been going together ever since, going to high schools and all over together, uh, and done programs and pictures and everything else. And Larry was doing all the typing at the trials at Nuremberg. And, but, but there was no pictures on, on, of him on the, sitting with the with the prisoners or anything like that, or with the uh, person that was handling the trials, you know. So that's how we got uh, interested in that. And then he came out here one day, and we were standing here on the porch, and there was Larry and Jerry, and uh, they took a picture. <laughs> A person that was at the trials, and his picture's on the in there. I'll show it to you in the, in the back side there. And he put the book together. Well, he he did at one time, and then he was then he passed on, and then his uh, either his sister or his aunt sent that up to me because she thought I might be interested in it. What's all the, What's all the writing on this dollar? I don't know. It's, it's somebody's signature, some some German signature that was at the trials. So these people on trial signed this dollar bill. Yeah, mm -hmm. for him, the guy that you asked about this question here. Yeah. Not me. Well, maybe we can read it somehow. Yeah, you never know. We'll let the camera run in case somebody can see what it is. Yeah, and then on the bottom there by your foot, there's a, no, right here where there's a little, she wrote an article right there. Oh, yes. Yeah, the lady that sent that to me. And uh, it tells about her uncle or brother or whatever it was that brought those back from Germany. Jerry, if you had your choice, would you have been a guard at Nuremberg or would you have done something else now that you look back on it and it's a piece of history? I think I would have been at the age where I would have been right where I was, right at the Nuremberg trials. Very interesting. Now, when you go to schools and talk about World War II, do the kids seem to understand what happened in the past and how bad it was? Some of them and some of them don't. I, I, uh, I got a portfolio from uh, about uh, 35 kids that were at the last one I was at, at uh, Pequot Lakes, and uh, they thanked me for uh, coming and showing them all these pictures and explaining everything to him. And my wife was with me at the time because Larry wasn't around and uh, he couldn't come, so Grace had to come in and my wife Grace had to come in and she explained a lot of these pictures too that she knew about and so forth. And then we got a nice uh, letter back from each one of the kids thanking me for coming. What age group were the kids? Uh, the age group, I think they were nine, ten, Eighth and ninth grade. And then they sh they're old enough to understand that yeah. part mm -hmm. of history. So they, were in a they asked a lot of questions, too. They were very interested. They asked a lot of questions? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Questions about the trial about or other things? So about everything. Well, that's yeah. good. Mm -hmm. that they want to and Larry went to so many. He must have went to 40 different uh, schools. Yeah, probably more than that. Do you ever wish you had a chance to talk to Goring one-on-one? -on -one? I don't think so. I really didn't care to talk to any of them. Okay, well, they probably didn't speak English anyway. So. No, and uh, and uh, I was there, just there for my duty, and I performed my duty, and that was what I was there for. So I didn't uh, particularly care, really, and I was, I was so happy to hear that Hitler had done what he'd done, and that was it. And uh, so we were just glad to get out of there and get home again. 
Larry, thanks for taking the time to talk to me today and those that are watching this video. Well, thank you very much, and thank you for letting me take a picture of this. I'm very proud of that big red one and the braids. That's the Eisenhower jacket. What is the orange stripe? Pardon? What is the orange stripe here? That's the Eisenhower jacket. No, this here. Oh, I'm not too familiar with all parades. this. Okay. Yeah, I could give you a copy, but I don't have no right now. That was a big unit, the big red one. Did you have to go to any area where the Holocaust concentration was? Well, I camps? did accidentally, but I didn't have to go there. When you, what do you mean accidentally? How did you just Well, I by? just, curiosity killed the cat and satisfaction brought him back. I've heard a lot about it, and so I went there. Remember which camp it was? No, I don't. I really don't. Did you walk around the camp or just go oh, by? Oh, we just, just go by. Yeah. Just, just went by it. Yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. Probably in a Jeep or something like that. I don't know. My name is Grace. Grace, I, did you accompany Jerry to a lot of the schools? Uh, not a lot, but a few of the schools I did, as I have read quite a bit about the Nuremberg trials also. How did you feel the kids reacted to what Jerry had to say? I was very impressed, especially on this last one we were at. They asked a lot of, Pequot Lakes, they asked a lot of questions and they were very interested and they sent letters thanking, uh, uh, thanking us for coming and I was very impressed because they were quite young, eighth graders and ninth graders. And we were both from Pequot Lakes. We went to school there together. Uh, you both did? We both were born and raised in Pequot. Oh, that's an understanding. <laughs>